Um, what are your best tips to help us save money at the grocery store while we are getting good nutritional value? That is a great question, Pam. So one of the things we're going to talk about today, the most important thing we're going to talk about today is your centerpiece of your meal, which is pork. Pork is such a great value because not only does it feed your family, not only is it delicious, but it is great value. Just this week, the USDA's numbers say it's 62% less expensive to buy a New York pork chop than it is to buy a New York strip steak, and it's 64% less expensive to buy a porterhouse pork chop than it is to buy a porterhouse steak. So when you think about that, that's your that's your number one. Also, buying fresh ingredients, heading to the farmer's market, buying things that are healthy and in season, great tip. So combining those two things, I've got a recipe here in front of me and I'm really excited to share it with you because this is something that fed my family for under $10, family of four, and this is one of the recipes that is on our website, porkbeinspired.com, and it's one of a series of recipes that will be on our website all summer long that fall into that category of being under $10 or less for a family of four. Can I share the, the recipe with you? Yes, please. Absolutely, okay. So it starts with a New York pork chop. I sent my husband outside to the grill. He grills it, he uses just a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I'm inside and I make a salsa. It is a minted strawberry avocado salsa. I mentioned to you how important it is, I think, to be using fresh ingredients, and that is a cost-effective, budget-friendly thing to do. Why? Because I'm heading to the farmer's market. Rather than buying things that are not in season and spending more money, I'm buying things that are less expensive. Red onion, avocado, strawberry, a little bit of lime, and some mint. I'm dicing all of those things together. All of the flavors meld together beautifully, and then they complement that pork chop when it comes off the grill, and the flavors are divine. Now, when I say divine, you wonder, does it pass the kid test? I have two small people. My daughter is just about to turn nine, and my son is seven years old, and they both liked it. My son loved it. He ate the salsa and the pork together, my daughter was a little more apprehensive. She likes to have her things apart. So she ate the salsa in one bite and the pork in the other bite. That sounds like my children. <laughs> How old are your small people? Um, uh, they're uh, 19, 16, and 10. So. You have a busy house. Yes. Uh, can you explain the new pork labeling system to us? I certainly will. So you heard me say Porterhouse Pork Chop and New York Pork Chop. Those uh -huh. names sound familiar because they sound more like what we've traditionally heard for beef. Okay? We wanted to make this familiar for families, familiar for consumers, so they would understand how to start preparing pork chop. Pork for a long time now has been one of those meats that we've wondered, how do I prepare this? Should I cook it to a certain degree? Do I make it medium, medium rare? The answer is yes, you're going to put, cook your pork just as you've always cooked your beef. So by changing the names to be Porterhouse Pork Chop, to be uh, ribeye pork chop, to be New York pork chop, we're now letting people know that you're going to be cooking your pork the same way that you've always traditionally cooked your beef. You're going to use a thermometer, an internal thermometer, and you're going to cook to 145 degrees Fahrenheit if you would like that pork chop to be medium rare, and then you're going to cook it to 160 degrees if you would like it to be medium. You'll allow that pork chop when you're done cooking it to sit for about three minutes so that it can marinate in its own juices and get that really juicy, tender feeling and then you're ready to go and you're ready to have that perfect piece of meat, perfect to your liking. That sounds good. Um, do you have any marinating tips you'd like to share with us on how to um, keep pork tender? For me, one of the ways that I like to marinate, I like to marinate in the fridge overnight. So that's my personal preference. Uh, and you know, we haven't talked a ton about marinating today, but that really is my personal preference. But we're going to have a ton of recipes on porkbeinspired.com that will give you all kinds of ways. And if you have pork recipes that you like to share, you'll be able to do that both there and on the Facebook page, sort of as a recipe swap, because we're very big into social. Oh, that sounds good. Um, how do you involve your children in the cooking process? I like to have them cook with me and prepare items with me. So they love color and flavor. So when they get more involved, I found that my kids are, my kids are very big in do as I do rather than do as I say type of things. So rather than saying to them, you have to eat healthy, I show them how to do it. So when they're involved in the process, now that I have given them this entire meal, the next time I make it, they're going to help me cut up the avocado. They're going to help me cut up the strawberries. They're, I'm gonna show them how to dice the mint. And you know, I'll, I'll tell you this, this was something that was actually a neat experience for me. I had to learn how to cut some of these items. I'd never diced an avocado before 
creating this meal. I had never learned how to dice mint perfectly, but now I know how. I went to YouTube, if I'm being honest. I went to YouTube and I learned how to do all of these individually, and it was such a fun process. So I can involve my kids that way too, because my kids love to watch videos online. So I will show them how I learned and let them learn the process the same way. That's a good idea. Um, you've written a book, Mom Incorporated, A Guide to Business and Baby. Yes. Uh, do you have any tips you'd like to share with us on how to treat our blog as a business? Yes, you have to. First, one of the best things is definitely have a business plan, and you have to set specific hours. So if you're treating your blog as a business, you actually have to set specific hours. And one of the things that I found is most important is actually having a conversation with your family that tells them that this is not a hobby, that this is actually a job. I found that uh, when Eliza and I, who is my co-author in the book, when we were touring talking about the book, there are lots of women who decided they wanted to start a business, but they never sat down and had a conversation with their significant other that said, this is in fact a business. They just started online and they got going. But there is a difference between sitting down and saying to someone, this is what I would like to do and I'm going to need your help. Because when your significant other recognizes that you're starting to do that, they don't necessarily understand the process. But when you say, I'm going to need your help, I'm going to be busy, then they can chime in and they can get involved with helping around the house. They can get involved in helping you to take care of the kids or doing some of the things that you're no longer available to do because you're working on your business. If you want it to be a business, you have to treat it as a business, which means that you have to have set hours. You have to be willing to invest time and potentially money. And you have to have that hard conversation with your family that explains what it is that matters to you. That is very good advice. Thank you very much. Um, um, thanks for your time today, Danielle. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us before you leave? There is one other thing I would like to share. I mentioned porkbeinspired.com, and I did mention that there will be 10 recipes that will roll out over the summer that fall into that $10 or less category. But really excited because next week there is also a game online called the Pork Chop Drop, and that allows people to register to win the grand prize, which is $1,000. But also, anytime you play the game, you'll be getting uh, access to special games or special recipes, but also you could potentially get coupons for additional money off of pork and those coupons are good at any grocery store any butcher anywhere you purchase pork so when we talk about how important savings are this summer that's a great way to get additional savings yes indeed okay thank you very much thank you for having me okay bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.